ancient Indian text and literature mentions soil or land as their mother, the one who supports and nourishes all lives on earth. Soil was recognized as a base of survival in ancient Vedas. Early Indian civilization has flourished and sustained itself for thousands of years on the alluvial soil of River Sindhu and Saraswati. The country revered the soil as sacred and inviolable. Ancient Vedic people had immense respect for soil as Mother Earth. The ancient Vedas invoked the prayers to Prithvi, it means the Earth. Samudra Vasne Devi. Parvat Stanamandi, Vishnu Patni Namas Tupya, Padas Parsham Shamaswami, which means, O consort of Lord Vishnu, salvations to you. Please forgive my touch of the feet on earth, which is your holy body. It is the basis for all terrestrial lives, including humans. This is why the Indians prefer to sit and walk on bare soil for sustaining the strong forces, energy, spirit and consciousness. Even the most vital ingredient of human which is air, water and food are under the influence of soils. Although the soil is beneath our feet, it takes every care of our survival, nourishment and even livelihood. This is why we worship soils in different forms and manners in different parts of India. It is only India where, along with plants, trees and animals, soil is worshipped. The soil of India witnessed the growth of one of the oldest civilizations in the world, the Indus Valley Civilization. In Indus Valley Civilization, human creation was depicted by different forms of art. Painting was prominent among them. Soil was not only used as the base but also used to prepare colors. From farms to houses, from forts to courtyards, from pots to bricks, from prayers to rituals and from birth to death. It is the soil which has been the part of our life in Indian culture. Soil is not just part of socio-economic and religious cultural setting but also a tool for expression, the creativity of mankind in the form of art. Ranging from the rural artisans manufacturing earthen pots, toys and idols, traditional painters doing big decorations on the festivals or a rural village woman depicting her creativity on the earthen wall of her hut or house. Soil is used as the basic element of traditional art and craft. Today, we would be taking a tour of one such traditional art form, the art of soil, the lip and calm of Kutch. Indian women played a pivotal role in designing various arts and crafts from daily mundane courses of works, which includes decoration of walls with soil, cow dung, and several geometrical shapes. Mud mirror work, traditionally known as Lipin Ka or Chitra Ka, is one of its biggest examples. In Gujarati language, Lipin means mud washing and Ka means work. It is a traditional mural graph of Kutch in Gujarat, which is in India, where women of the Rabari community had a tradition of decorating their houses in this style. The designs of these works came pretty spontaneously by women. Interior as well as exterior of their houses, popularly known as bhungas, were covered in this style of art by women. But one might have a question, why did these women decorate their houses in such beautiful yet simple geometric patterns and forms? Well, we have an answer for this. As Kutch had a harsh climate, Applied mud on walls here was like a coat of protection from heat and cold. For people living in these houses, also the clay made to do little calm had higher soil content and was totally organic to protect and keep the house warm. Little calm on the outer surface of the homes act as an 
insulated by reflecting heat. This helps keep the interior of the house cool. The beauty of the handiwork is enhanced by its utility even more. Inside the home, the inner walls are adorned with decorative mud mirror work. The mirrors are there for a very good reason. A single lamp proves enough to light up a considerable part of the home. Light reflects from the glittering mirror work. Lippin work evolves as the women work together, singing songs and teasing one another. When the men perform the task of picking the clay and carrying it from its source to the work site or storage hut, sense of community and fun adds so much to this art. It is one of the finest examples of improvised creativity that works on multiple levels. Indian women played an important role in preserving and keeping many such art forms alive, which is now helping them earn through the talent and the rich tradition of craft, which is the pride of our country. Women of the Rabadi community mostly practice this art. However, this art form had a holy past as no records are available to trace its origin. Various communities in Kutch do mud washing with their own distinctive style. Artisans of the Muslim community practicing this art form stick to the graphic and eye-catching geometric patterns of Lipinka. As depicting the human or animal form is considered deeply un-Islamic. Mud mirror work gathered attention of the modern world for its intricate patterns and aesthetic perfection and has made a full transition from its unknown modest stature to the mainstream art world decorating the walls of urban houses. Lipanka is usually seen in the graceful forms of peacocks, camels, elephants, elegant water-bearing women, joyous women churning buttermilk, symbolic temples, mango trees and other examples of life in the kach. The lipid on the walls, partitions, doorways, lintels, bridges and the floors of the Bunga's core elaborate bas relief decorations that consist of oakly textures created by the impression of fingers and palms and sculpted forms that are inlaid with mirrors. Mud relief work is done by different communities in Kutch and they have their own distinct style which include Kachi Rabari mud relief work, Harijan mud relief work and Mutwa mud relief work. Lipin Kaam What exactly is the material and its process? The dung used is that of a camel or wild ass and acts as a binding agent as it is rich in fibers. The clay used in mud which has been passed through a seed to obtain fine particles that mix more easily. Equal proportions of tongue and clay are mixed and kneaded to form the dough used for lip and calm. Some have mentioned that the use of husk or parchly, that is millet, is an alternative to the dung. When the dung attracts termites, the husk does not. Small portions of the dough are taken and shaped into cylinders of varying thickness by rolling between the palms on the floor. This is then pasted on the moist surface that is the wall or wooden panel on which the decorative art form is to be done. Each artwork usually starts by using the dough to first create lines, then define the boundary of the artwork. Motifs are then created in bas relief, that is sculpture in which the figures project slightly from the background, mostly freehand by memory, by using palms and fingers pinching and shaping the mud mixture. The motifs are inspired from the rich and famous embroidery patterns and once the walls are done, they look stunning with mirrors embedded in the mud work. Much like the embroidery itself, the mirrors used are called abla and come in various shapes, round, diamond and triangular. After the clay dries for in about 4 to 5 days, a layer of white clay is painted over the artwork. The white comes from sand of this marshland 
that is rich in salt content. Though the authenticity of Lipin Kam lies in a complete piece that is white or in shades of neutrals, bright colors like red and green are sometimes painted on the dry clay work. Now, as we are speaking about Lipin Kam, which has a direct association with Bhunga architecture, the history of Kutch and its houses, that is Bhungas, is also an interesting topic. Firstly, why are the houses in Kutch circular? After the 1891 earthquake in Kutch region, building craftsmen developed the circular homes for, called Bhunga, traditional mud houses. They were circular houses with thatched roofs. It's a century-old construction style in harmony with the environment constructed by mud floors and walls, tapped in thatched roofs. Bhungas in different seasons. The traditional bhunga is considered as an engineering marvel as it can withstand severe winds, dusts, storms, and seismic activities. The materials used in construction of bhungas keep the interior cool during the hot season and warm in cold seasons. Bhungas during earthquake. Corners are the weakest part against lateral forces of an earthquake. Since there are no corners in bhungas, it makes the structure more stable during earthquake. Earthquake imparts lateral forces on the structure. Due to the circular plan of bhunga, one half part of bhunga always reacts as an arch against the force applied from any direction that the earthquake waves hits the structure. Thus, the bhunga uses maximum advantage against lateral forces of an earthquake. Evolution of bhungas Meghwal Marwada people migrate in search of work. These people used to construct their houses by the materials they found in nature. The evolution is seen in the materials used in the construction of Bhunga. But the construction mostly changed from temporary to permanent Bhungas. The place where the Meghwal family stays together in multiple Bhungas is called Meghwal Vas. Bavar Mi Bhunga Bavar is a babul tree. Earlier they used babul tree because they were easily available in the surrounding. Chal Mati Thitti People started coating Bavar Mi Bhunga by using the mixture of clay, that is Mati, and coating coating which was available in the surrounding. Patthano Bhunga Later, people used Kala Danga, nearby mountain stone and built Bhungas. Mattino Bhunga they are the mud brick bhungas which we can see in most of the villages nowadays. Nowadays, things are constructed by using cement but the structure remains the same. Today, the style of decoration on walls is a popular art of high-end designs. Restaurants, theatres, airports, people enjoy the rustic natural art developed in Kutch. Art of and by the songs of India. Team Kathik feels proud narrating such stories of our ancient soils and you all being our listeners. That's all for today. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll be back soon with more such exciting stories and episodes. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on our Instagram and Facebook handles. Till then, stay tuned and have a great day. Goodbye.